Hi everyone, and welcome to the second session of Digital Dontics webinar series. This is Mahmoud al Bashti with you today from Digital Dontics International Academy. It's our pleasure and honor to welcome our guest speaker, Dr. Vinicius Rizzo, a prosthodontist and dental technician from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Dr. Rizzo will share with us his experience in intellectual planning for complex oral rehabilitation cases. Dr. Vinicius is a dental surgeon, graduated in 2011 with master and PhD degree in applied dental science, oral rehabilitation at the Bauru School of Dentistry, University of Sao Paulo, Brazil. Also, his graduation was completed at the Faculty of Dental Science, University of Porto, Portugal, during his study, he held a scientific internship at the Department of Biological Science and the Department of Prosthodontics and Periodontics. He was a monitor of fixed prosthodontics and removable prosthodontics. He was a student representative in the FOP Cool Gaze and president of the Academic Center. In 2012, he joined the program for professional practice in dental prosthesis at the FOP University of Sao Paulo. He defended his master's degree in 2015 under the guidance of the Professor Dr. Wellington Cardoso Banchela and a doctorate in 2020 under the guidance of the Professor Dr. Wellington Cardoso Banchela and Professor Dr. Eduardo Sanchez. In addition, he finished the ITI internship in Bern, Switzerland for the year 2020-2021. Currently, he coordinates several postgraduate courses. So um, just before Dr. Uh, Vinicius start, I would like to mention that attendees can write their uh, uh, questions and comments on the Q&A uh, section. And after uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Vinicius will finish the, the presentation, he will answer those uh, questions. So uh, Dr. Vinicius, it's my pleasure to uh, welcome you here today. Um, so without any delay, I think, uh, 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 you can start uh, your presentation. So the stage is yours. Uh, please share your uh, screen, please. Thank you very much. Just let me fix here. Good. So, well, uh, first of all, thank you very much, uh, Mo uh, Mahmoud, for, well, introduce me <laughs> like this. <laughs> it's a little embarrassing because, well, it's like a um, our national curriculum so usually we we place everything there but well uh, I have some like around 15 years of dentistry my father is a dentistry so uh, I live it <laughs> like a prosthodontist uh, for a long time <laughs> that's so, great <laughs> yeah so well uh the title of my lecture is Intellectual Planning uh, for Complex Rehabilitation Cases. And why I I, I thinking about this uh, this theme, right? This this title. Uh, most of all, because I find uh, in a lot of students of ours uh, that we have uh, a lot of difficulty uh, cases, a lot of complex cases, and usually is more like I have no idea where I can start. So uh, thinking about it, well, I try to, to simplificate a little, to make like a steps than uh, our students. And I think uh, maybe you can see uh, and maybe you can help itself, yourself to, to see it and make your, my idea is make you thinking uh, more like step by step and trying to make it easy. Okay. So, 
Mahmoud already introduced me. Uh, I am a dentistry and, and well, I make a lot of <laughs> things. And, but uh, first of all, I am a dentist. So I, uh, I'm a clinician. I work on a, a very nice clinic in my city, Botucatu. It's a, a small city uh, in Sao Paulo. And I have uh, a lot of, uh, I have a possibility to make some lectures. I'm coordinating some courses, some uh, specialization courses. So uh, I'd like to, I always like to teach to my students what I do in my clinic. So uh, first I am a dentist, I am a clinician, then I am uh, on the secondary place, uh, I am uh, a teacher too. So I'd like to introduce you our first patient. See, you can see here, it's not like the youngest patient, but it's, um, it's a woman. You can see she had a, maybe not a nice smile, but well, I can place here another picture and you can see like there is something happened here. We can see like an uh, extrusion of, of some tooth, of some teeth. Uh, we can see like uh, different shapes of teeth. And well, I can tell you and you will see like uh, this patient is some kind of artist, right? You can see here, what kind of material is that? I can tell you this is cotton with super glue. So this patient, uh, made it by herself. So she made some teeth with super glue and cotton. And well, she came for us and let's start. So I'd like to ask you all, how do you start? Well, trying to make it easier, I made these steps for uh, complex planning. So we have some steps that we need to, to discuss first, then we can see here the complexity classification and we can classificate our cases like lower complexity, medium complexity and high complexity. Of course, the high complexity is the most uh, complex cases. So we need to have more information to work. So let's start with the anamnesis, yeah? The anamnesis is like the, the, the questions you ask for your patient, not necessarily the teeth history, but uh, the, the dental history or this kind of things is more around everything. So you make some steps, uh, you will ask her uh, or your patient, the main complaint, the needs and the expect, uh, expectations of this patient, what, uh, what the patients need. So you need to be more like uh, a big, you, you, sh you should think more like big in the big scenario, then later you will go to the small scenario. So you will ask about the medical and dental history. Uh, you will see uh, how this patient uh, think uh, what what she she's looking for. So we will look around the psychological aspects, and sometimes you can see even in the first uh, in the first uh, in the first day you can see some parafunctional habits. Well, for the anamnesis, you should have an honest dialogue between uh, examiner and the patient. You should ask for uh, ask everything uh, the patient usually when she when the patient come for us they have a lot of questions they have a lot of issues that they want to want us to explain so be honest and say like your case is not easy your case is complex uh, it demands for us a lot of study you should be like a lot uh, honest because otherwise in the future this, play, this patient could complain complain, uh, complain for you because you don't have enough time to explain for her or this kind of things. 
be willingness to listen. So you should be a good listener to be a dentist. So we recommend you to thinking about it. Usually we work with older patients. So they like to, to speak a lot. So we should like fishing uh, some important uh, issues about it. Demonstrate interest in the patient's problems, of course. If the patients come for us, it's not like, well, this is nice day, I will go to the dentist. No, the patient have some complaints, some pain, so we should uh, look for it. And of course, be able to perform the treatment that is proposed. It's not a fault. You look at the patient and say, look, your case is too hard, uh, too hard for me. Uh, I, I don't think I can solve your, your problem. So I will send you to another doctor. I, I like a lot to call to another doctor and say like, look, uh, I will send you a patient. This is the situation. Uh, if, you, if you can, please let me know when you attend to these patients. And I like to go there and introduce the patients and discuss with my, my colleague, uh, what's the treatment planning? Because I'd like to learn. And of course, uh, it's, it's good to learn from a teacher, but sometimes when you sit on the dentist chair, you should like try to learn from the other dentists too. It's very nice to, to hear about another opinions. And sure, surely uh, obtaining all information is not completed on the patient's first visit. So this is the first point, the nominations. The second one is the extraoral, uh, extraoral examines. So we should look about the facial proportion, vertical dimension, the smile line, and the labial, uh, labial support. The point here is more like you are a prostodontics, you are a oral rehabilitation kind of dentist. So you should not look just inside the mouth because you, you change a lot of times the vertical dimension and you should look for the face. So for us, we're thinking about the to total prosthesis, the, complex, the complete denture is like the hardest uh, kind of prosthesis because you're not change the teeth. You change the gums, you change the vertical di uh, dimension, you, you change the, the proportion of the face of the patient. So you should thinking about it because uh, you should learn how to see the patient. So the facial proportion, we usually divide the patient in three thirds. So we work it on the lower third. So it's important to have some kind of proportion in this tree. Of course, this is a model. So she had the correct proportion. And the vertical dimension, we have a lot of little issues about it. Uh, sometimes the students have some, some doubts how they make this kind of metering. So here in Brazil, we use the Willis compass. It's like this little ro uh, rule, and you can place on the, the lower part of the nose and in the menton, and you can see, uh, you can measure it. Uh, for us, it's easier, for the students, it's easier because it's not a subjective uh, kind of examination. It's like an objective. So you will find this value, and this, is, this could be, or this should be, in the end of the treatment, this exactly same value. So it's easier for our students, and usually for us, for us uh, clinicians, it's easier to find. So the vertical dimension is the height of the lower third of the face, the face uh, or the spatial ratio of the jaw in relation in the maxilla in the vertical plane. So we find here the vertical plane, the disposition, we will help us to define the final vertical dimension. We have three possibilities here. The first is the vertical dimension is maintained. So we will see in our patient, the facial muscle uh, stability. So you can see it's like the patient relaxed, don't have uh, tension in her, in, in her face in this case. 
uh, we can see a satisfactory, uh, satisfactory and comfortable oral sealing. So you can seal, uh, the patient can seal, seal the lips uh, without make pressure. So uh, for us, I think the most of us have the vertical dimension maintained, it is easier. Um, and of course, balance between the thirds, uh, the facial thirds, so we can see. Looking at this patient, we can see we don't don't see a lot of uh, deep sucus. We can we cannot see like she's making any pressure. I will show you another patient that uh, the, the the tension in the face could happen. And the other possibility is the vertical dimension decreases. Here we can see a patient with uh, we call facial collapse. So the patient don't have. Uh, labial support, the, the patient don't have um, stability in the muscle, the muscle here is hypotonic, so uh, it's like an old patient, see? So we will see reduction in the lower third of the face, deepening the nasolabial sulcus over here, the mental projection, the lips uh, usually in, uh, intrudes, so like you can see like a very uh, small, usually the upper lip is very small, and sometimes this patient uh, have some joint symptomatology. It, it occurs because uh, this patient don't have, in this case, I will show you, the, this patient don't have any teeth, so the patient don't have any stop, so the mental will move more, because the jaw will move more to close per, uh, to close to complete close the the jaw and of course the uh, the joint will move more so usually the ligaments over there will be more um, we will suffer more than a patient with teeth and here with a close picture you can see like this patient have some kind of um, angle class three. So uh, it's not because it's a skeletal class three, but it happens because of the tooth, uh, the bone uh, remodelation before the extraction. So you can see here, uh, it's a very young patient, around 30 years, and lost all his teeth when he is very young. So here is the situation. So we try trying to solve it with dental implants. You can see here, it's very hard case. We made some, uh, some surgeries, we placed the implants, and here's the situation with teeth. So this, this patient looks now like this. And here we can compare with and without prosthesis, of course, the muscle there, it's, uh, it, it keeps a little hypotonic, but with the years training and uh, start uh, by things and start uh, working with his, uh, his mouth, it will be uh, with normal tonicity again. Here with and without the prosthesis, and here with a side view, we can see the same without and with the prosthesis, uh, making uh, the uh, labial support good again. So it's not properly a class three, but you can see here, we can fix it with the new prosthesis. And on the other side, we have the dimension, the vertical dimension increased. So you can see the patient with uh, elongated uh, elongated uh, face, it's like the third is bigger. So you can see here in this case, it's a very complex case uh, because these patients have a lot of pain and the, the teeth have a lot of mobility. So taking impressions and well, making the prosthesis is very hard. We don't like to remove all teeth and like, well, we will be one or two months without teeth. So we have to make a transitional prosthesis. So 
uh, it's a very hard case I will show you. So on the other side of the decreased, here in the decreased uh, vertical dimension, you can see like the, uh, the muscle is uh, imperative. So the patients have every time she wants to speak, every time she wants to close her mouth, every time she, she wants to have a social life, she has to close her lips. And of course, the teeth are, uh, ex uh, are extruded. So usually she show her, uh, her teeth. So he have, she had to close her mouth and the muscles there to close are always working. So she don't have a relaxed position. So uh, it's very complex case, it's very hard. Uh, she has difficulty to seal, to, sealing, to sealing her lips, difficult to swallow, chewing, uh, speaking. And in this case, of course, she has teeth sensibility. Look here how, may, uh, how much uh, cementum she has exposed. So this patient has a lot of sensibility. And because the teeth are with mobility, she don't have... Uh, she didn't have any good position to st stabilize her mandible, so her jaw. This is the situation. We already removed the posterior teeth. And look here how strong uh, the muscle should be to close her mouth. So here she, can, uh, she needs to force the muscle there to close her lips. So this is the situation there. Here is with the lips relaxed, we make the registration there, and then we took it to the, uh, to the articulator. And here we can see like how much we should cut the teeth and uh, make the, the occlusal dimension uh, lower. So it's a very hard case. And here, the smile line is another point that you should think in when you're trying to, defin to define the complexity of your treatment. The smile line uh, is a very important issue. You, you can see here the medium uh, exposition of the, the gum. It's, the, it's not the best situation, but 70% around the, the population have this kind of smile line. So it's hard, it's not like, the easiest case, but uh, you can solve it. Usually you, you will find this kind of patient. Uh, on the other side, the low uh, smile line is the best situation because you should not like thinking about making some, some gun surgeries to make all the zenities perfectly. Uh, you, sh you can work with just teeth. You don't have to thinking about uh, the red or the pink aesthetics. On the other side, you can see here on the on the other uh, picture here, the high small line is the most complex case because you should thinking about the contour of the gun around the teeth, the zenity. Sometimes, if you have an implant there, you should uh, make some 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 surgeries to make it uh, more uh, with different characterizations of the gun. So it's the hardest case. And the other point is the interval for us. We are dentists, we work with it every day. So the cavities and the restorations, some aesthetic exchanges, uh, abdominal, uh, abnorm abnormal wear and tear. You can see uh, around it, it's it's our house, so we can do it uh, easily. Uh, the number of the uh, and arrangement of the teeth, the, cre the clinical crown size, all of it we should look in for, but I will not spend a lot of time there because we do it every day, so it's easier for us. But there is a point we should look in better. Uh, it's the per uh, periodontal examination. Uh, it should be essential in all stages of the treatment. 
look at this case. You can see here we have two imp dental implants. We look around and well, it's not perfect, but looking at that, we maybe we can work with it. It's not like the worst situation, but when we look around, we can see here uh, this kind of issue, this kind of situations uh, make our life miserable because the patient have these implants, the patient think these implants are good to work, and with this kind of bone re uh, re reabs this kind of bone reabsorption, we these implants without the prosthesis, the patient never had a prosthesis there. It's these implants is already lost, so it's very hard because we need to remove these implants and. Half of these implants are um, are also integrated, so it's very hard to say to the patient like, "Look, you lost these implants, but I just made it. I never had a prosthesis there." So we should uh, discuss a lot with the patients, and sometimes it's better to send this patient back to the other dentist because this is a. a delicate situation. Uh, the other point is some complementary exams. Here in, in the prosthetic area, usually we don't, don't, don't need like the, the blood uh, exam or this kind of things. We work more with the radiography exams. So, so periapical, interproximal, occlusal, panoramic and tomograph. Uh, here is a picture of a uh, panoramic exam that we have in one patient. We, uh, the old dentist now, uh, we work it with this kind of radiograph. It's an um, analogic uh, radiograph. Uh, and we can see here this teeth like here is this tooth right, right here is this tooth. So this situation is, is complex. We should uh, take in, we always uh, prefer to take periapical hydrographs than the panoramic, even with the digital ones. And well, we have the tomography now. We work a lot of tomographies. And this case, we can see here, we have two, dental implants here. Uh, looks like uh, they are touching the, the canines here. And when we look on a better view, I will show you another, another picture. You can see uh, it's very close. I can show you this video. And here is going on the lower to the, the, the higher. Look at this implant first. Is very close, is very close, is very close, and here is the kiss. So you can see here uh, this implant, uh, it's very close, even inside the roof of this canine. And coming here, let me come here again. And on the, this side, you can see like it's not touching, but it's very, very, very close. So this kind of exam helping uh, helps us to find this kind of uh, diagnostics here. And well, the pictures, the protocol, the photography protocol is very important for us because we can match the intraoral pictures and the extraoral and make a a very nice and a very nice case presentation that we can show to our patient. And of course, we can, this kind of presentation helps us to sell to the patient our uh, treatment plan. So here is a lot of pictures. Sometimes people look at that and why this much of pictures? I can tell you every picture here have a, um, have a, uh, there is a reason to take every picture of that. So the smile line, the, the profile picture, the 45 degrees, 
picture, every picture here have uh, a meaning. So I will not explain a lot, but just show you like this is very easy to take. Like these three pictures, like relax it, smile and smile and open a little your mouth. So it's three pictures, 45 degrees, three pictures, profile, three pictures is very hard. It's like not more than five minutes taking pictures of the external uh, situation. And in the internal situations, we have, uh, so a profile is like uh, anterior, lateral, uh, occlusal. I like this one. It's like with the black uh, contrast to make some digital smile design or another kind of explanations to show to my technician the, the characterization of the teeth. Here is like protrusive um, and canine guided disocclusion. So here we can see like on the right and here in the left. I like this picture. It's like 12 hours picture. We go like on the top of our patients and take this picture with the eyes and the smile. So we can see uh, it helps us to see the protrusion, the position of the, the teeth. Here is a case that we change to, to this kind of thing. It was veneers. And here we can see like the lip situation and the correlation between the lip, the lower lip and the smile. And in the end, we have the models, see? Uh, now we work a lot of with digital models. It's like a lot of digital models, uh, but in the point the point here is like we should have these models uh, and work with um, articulator. So this will help you to to define the position of the maxilla of the patients, and then we can follow you should follow the, the proper planification, the walks up of your patient. For it is very important to know how to use the face bowl. I don't know uh, around the world, but here in Brazil, uh, we use it a lot because this is the most important thing of the articulator. Oh, of course, the articulator is good. You can open and close and make the, the positions, the the movement uh, the movementations of the jaw but the point is if you have a bad position of the maxilla we will lost everything so the 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 reason to use the articulation is used is is uh, is most to transfer the position of the maxilla of your patient to your articulator so you should always thinking about to transfer this position with the face bow in the correct in the correct position. So we have another uh, we have this uh, kind of uh, face bow. This is a mechanical face bow, so it's very easy to use. We have here now. This is the Elite uh, face bow in the uh, in the. It is from BioArt. It's a Brazilian company. It's very easy to, to use. So you just place the fork. We call it fork here. The, the, the intraval uh, the intraval resist registration. And then we place the face bowl and just turn this screw. And this is perfect. So we just place here and uh, we can we can do the articulator uh, procedure. It's very easy to work. That's the point. Well, another possibility to to transfer the maxilla position to our uh, dental technician 
it's working with an analogic smile design. We heard a lot of digital smile design, but we have the analogic smile design too. Here is the analogic smile design. We use it every day working with total prosthesis. It's like our uh, everyday working. Here we use the Fox ruler and we can see uh, with the, the eyes with the patients, the bipopular line, we can find a uh, properly position of the the position of the or the angulation of our of the maxilla. Here we can de define it the bipolar line and make a parallel line with the Fox ruler. Of course, we should have some. Uh, we should be concerned that it's not for all patients. This is a Brazilian politician, and you can see like. Her, uh, his eyes don't have um, a good match. So if you if we if we find uh, if we follow the rule of the popular line, of course the occlusal plane will be changed. So we have another lines, the ophriac lines, and the even the nasal lines, the nasal wings lines. We can use to define on the lateral side. We can see here, we can use the Fox ruler to, to define the parallelism between the camper, uh, camper plan and the occlusal plane. Of course, uh, we should, or uh, ideally, we use it to be parallel, these two lines. The other point is the digital smile design. Uh, this is the way we work now uh, every day. So I take pictures of the, the patient. You can see here the smile. You can see here the intraoral situation. I made, sorry about the sound. Uh, I made a intraoral scanning of this patient. I have the upper and the lower scanning. And then I will superpose with the picture. I try to do it. Uh, with some stops. Here is the face of the patient. Here is the models. This is my first one. I think it's four or five years ago. And this is the situation. Now we have a lot of different things, but this is like the basics. We will choose uh, two points, one in the model, one in the teeth, uh, in the picture, Another in the model, another in the picture. And then the software will superimpose these two, uh, two situations, the model, 3D model, the STL, and the picture of the patient. And then we can uh, place the right position or the best position of the model in the face of the patient. Here, find it. We will de uh, define the horizontal uh, line. So here, because the patient have a good proportional in the face, we find uh, we define the pupillar line, the medium line, and here is the proportion of the teeth, the golden golden ratio. Here. Golden ratio, 1.168. Then we define the size of the teeth, the proportional, how, uh, how much we'd like to expose of this teeth. And then we just wax up the teeth. We have a, a, a library of teeth with different kinds of kinds and size of teeth. And here, is me working, so I'm not a very, a very good, I'm not very good working with it in this time. So we can make the, the teeth in the right position, look in the face, and then we print this model. We make um, a mock-up. So it's very, 
uh, I, I don't like to show to the patient the planning in the computer. I'd like to show him in the mirror. So I'm, I, usually I make this kind of, uh, it's a mock-up and I take the pictures and show to the patient and send him in, the, in, his, in his cell phone um, PDF and he can show to his wife, he, his children and everything. So I, I, I'd like to do like this uh, analogic kind of thing. So here we can see it is like two days before. He's a father of a friend of mine. So it's not a problem to, to send him, him home. And here is the pictures. And here is before and after. Later, we made the crowns. And we have another uh, possibility is the digital face ball. This is from a month. So this is um, maybe not the future, maybe it's the present. And this is the situation. I never use it, so I don't have pictures of mine. Here, he is uh, measuring the intercondylar uh, distance. This triangle is like the reference. So every time he uses it, the software registrates the position. This, this is the paroclusal attachment. So look, the triangle again, and he is find the position of the maxilla. Look, the pre pandemic situation. <laughs> and now he will record the movements. So it's very nice. My time is almost over. So, so this is like the guide is lateral position, protrusal. And in the end, the software gave us, give us like all the position, the situation. It's a very nice uh, way of working. And here you, you can import the situation to, to Exocad, to Ceramil, to any software, and you, you, you can use it in the, in the articulator, in the virtual articulator. It's very nice, it's a very nice situation. And here we can define after everything, the complexity classification. Uh, I'd like to use uh, the ITI uh, uh, SAC, uh, the assessment tool. I will show you a video working with it. They just now they change a little, so make it easier, make it, it clear to show to our patient to to understand. So I'd like to show you a video. But just to explain, the SAC is now a free uh, free solution. So you can just make an account. You don't have credit card. You don't have to put any credit card or nothing. Just access the ITI uh, website. And then you can make it for your patients. In our postgraduate uh, courses, we use it as a definition of complexity for uh, our students. So every case, the student go to uh, ITI site and make a classification, SAC classification uh, for, for the case. So make to the student easier to thinking of all the issues that this patient or the, all the situations that this patient could uh, pass uh, uh, in the treatment. So the point here is helping the clinician uh, to assess the risks of each case. Uh, the SAC classifies between simple, advanced, and complex cases, and of course helps clean, uh, clinicians and the patient to help uh, to have a reference for the prognosis. So it will help us, uh, help helps us, and of course we can show to our patient. Here is the, the, the key QR code, the QR code, so you can scan it. And here is the website too. 
is very easy to find. I will show you. So you go here in the IGI uh, website. You can find here the SEC assessment. Here is my uh, account. I made another account without my credit card, without my registration and everything. It's just uh, an account. And here we can define if we want, we want a surgical case or if we want a prosthetics case. And here is the indication, the site, anterior, posterior, and we go and select. And it's very easy because uh, on the lower part here, you can see the explanation. They have a lot of pictures showing the different situations. And we can define like uh, the medical fitness, the medications, if the patient have some uh, disease treatment, uh, all the situations are the most important situations are showed head there and here. You can see the green, we can see the red, and you can see the yellow uh, situation. So here, uh, the, the system will showing us like all the, the, the possibilities here. I will pass forward a little. In the end, here, it's all here, the, the possibilities. And in the end, they show all the general risk assessments. So here, we can see everything that we need to explain uh, to uh, our patient. So it's a very nice uh, tool uh, that helps us every day. And of course, when we uh, classificate our cases in low, medium, and high complexity, the high complex cases are the harder to understand, to explain, and usually the situation, the, the high complex cases, the oral rehabilitation cases uh, take much more time for us to planning, to uh, explain to the patient, to make the surgeries and everything. So I'd like to show you some steps for uh, of the treatment that we usually I use uh, with my stu students. So the first steps, of course, is the impression, 3D impression, uh, scanning, registration, the same scanning, the the teeth of uh, the, the occlusal situation of the patient. I'd like always to, reg uh, to register my patient to, yeah, you understand, <laughs> to register my patient with the most close position of the final rehabilitation. So usually I use a um, jig or um, it's aesthetic jig to open a little, or I will show you in the case, to open the, the, the occlusal situation of the patient. I make my models a little higher, then I can have a space to reconstruct, to reconstruct the, the occlusal situation. I place it in the articulator. Uh, usually I use a virtual articulator. articulator. I don't have... Uh, Usually I don't have time to place everything to take impressions and go there with the Facebook. So I have the, I use, uh, usually I use I, the same way that I show you with the 3D uh, software. Then I make a planning situation. So I make a, a open a little or lower the, the inciso. Um, Um, I forgot the name, but the vertical dimension are open or uh, lower a little. Sorry? Do you mean central occlusal? Yeah, I reduce the, pre the patient in central occlusal. Okay. Then I can work a little with like a, a little millimeters uh, open or make it lower. Okay. And then I, I make a wax up <clears throat> and make always a mock up. Yes, it's a simulation in vivo because we know the 
the scanning is most of time is very good, but sometimes it's not perfect. So I always like to make a digital uh, mock-up in the patient and show him like, look, this is the situation. This is how we thinking about your treatment. And this is when uh, the patient buy my treatment or my treatment plan, because he can see in, her, in his mouth in front of a big mirror, he can see like, well, it could work for me. Then I make the occlusion uh, stabilization with fixed provisional. I will show in you a case that we try to make this, this uh, removable, uh, removable, uh, we try to make the, the vertical occlusion higher with some overlays, but removable overlays. And well, we have some bad, uh, the patient just didn't use it. So we make now fix it and we make the crowns or the implants, whatever. And then we make the surgery and the rehabilitation uh, phase. So we can prepare the teeth, we make restorations. Uh, guided, of course, by the WhatsApp, and then we can take impressions and make the final restorations. And uh, cement it or inst uh, install this, this crowns or the, the rehabilitation, and then we go to the posterior uh, controllers. And here to finish it, we can see here the end of uh, our cases, our case, and here is the same, how do you start? So first we can, ex we should examine our patient. Here you can see like the deviation of the uh, relaxed uh, dimension of occlusion. And here with the bite, I made the jig. Here is uh, the jig. I uh, use the, um, to define the new, occlusion, I use the facial position. It's not like the patient can seal the lips, the patient can uh, relax the, the muscle. So I look how much space I need to do a, a good reconstruction. Here is the jig. And I'd like to, to use it. It's a um, aesthetic jig. So with my, my own hand, like in five, 10 minutes, I place a lot of uh, acrylic and this is a golden ratio compass. And I make just some lines and make the patient smile, uh, say some like V when the, the tip of the central incisor, incisors touch the, the, the lower lip on the wet and dry line. So when we say F and V, we can see uh, the position, the right position of the, the incisors. And then I register, uh, I make, uh, I make and register, make a register with, well, uh, now we use the occlusal silicone, like Oclufest, and we can see here the difference between the new occlus uh, occlusal dimension and the older. We can see here, like we are open a little the occlusion of this patient. And I make the provisional. This is a removable provisional, but the patient uh, didn't use it, the, the, the upper. It's very hard for her. She's very, very old, but we make uh, like uh, the, the upper one, we make like a splint. So it was stable. We define it, the patient use. We made some uh, arrangements like, oh, it's very big. It's uncomfortable. She's showing a lot of teeth. So we remove it. We made it lower. Here is like what we thinking about, and on the in the lower picture you can see 
uh, the end of the provisional. Here is the phase situation and the end of the case. Here you can see the crowns uh, here in the mouth, inside. Sorry about the time, Mahmoud, I'm almost ended. Here is the, protru the protrusive position, the, the right and the, the left, uh, this occlusion in the canine. Here is the occlusion. Here in the lower is the, the situation of the removable. This removable uh, in the end was temporary because she lost another teeth in the lower. So we change it. Here is the provisional. Uh, we changed this, this removable. It's just a temporary in the end. Here's the situation in the day of the cementation. And you can see the face of this patient in my Instagram. I invite you to, to go there. Uh, you can ask the questions there. Uh, I know my English is not the best, but I try hard to explain for you if you have any questions. Here is the, the final situation. You can find there the, the full case. I invite you to join there. And well, this is what I have to tell you now. Okay, of course, there is a lot of another things to say, but in 45, 50 minutes, it's hard to explain a lot to, to be deeper. But the point is, that is what I like to show you. This is University of Bern, uh, where I was last year. It was an amazing um, experience. And well, I'm open for any questions and another uh, explanation if you need. Thank you very much, Mahmoud. Thank you very much for your time. And I'm open for all the questions. Thank you. Yes, it's impressive. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, myself, I really um, uh, like it and get interested. It's, it's very, very, very impressive. Uh, um, I'm sure even the attendees, um, they like it. Uh, you went through a different steps that uh, actually needed to treat and rehabilitate uh, patients who need uh, a prosthetic rehabilitation, uh, whether they are elderly patients or young patients. So they are still need kind of a prosthetic treatment. And in this lecture, you fly with us in many um, nice details and uh, aspects that really, really important for everyone who are planning to treat those kind of patients. And in the end, you summarize the, um, the cases and you categorize them in three uh, different uh, uh, classes, which make it very easy and simple for the clinician and practitioners to go through those uh, three classes. So you use the low complexity cases, then the medium complexity and the high complexity cases. And uh, what I noted that in the high complexity cases, you use a lot of digital um, technologies to deal with this kind of complexity. Um, so could you please uh, uh, touch on that, how digital technologies and advan advanced technologies can really simplify the uh, high complexity cases. Um, um, so just before you answer that one, um, once again, I would like to ask the attendees to write their questions if they have any, any questions. So Vinicius, please. Well, the, the point for me, Mahmoud, I, I know it's not like, uh, sometimes it's not like, what we we do is not like the the real life for the dentist. We we have uh, an internal scanning, and we have on on our site a uh, dental laboratory. Uh, so the point for me is like I can 
easily scan the patient and then I can uh, make a wax up and work with that uh, print it like it takes usually like two hours to print the 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 model the wax up yeah and it's easy to show the patient so for me it's like it's very nice to work with that probably with the young dentists they will work like that we have a we are in this transition you know but how easy it make the point for me is like you don't have to take impression you don't have to make the face bow you don't have to send to a technician or you stay in the laboratory like making the the gypsum model and this kind of things it's like it's not it's easier i i think it's cleaner you know okay. because it's not perfect the intraoral scanning we we know the the this kind of uh, treatment or this kind of uh, modality of treatment have some issues yeah uh, it's perfect but the point is like it's cleaner we you can make it sometimes it's not like uh with less time sometimes making a good scanning take more time than take a alginate impression but for me it's like it's cleaner and because i'm a teacher I can show to the, the students that. So I can put on a big screen and show like, look, this situation, you can do it. I can plan with the students. It's not like I'm showing to two or three students. No, I can show to a 20 students uh, class. So um, the touching, the disocclusion, the occlusion situation, I can show everything to the students. So it makes my life as a teacher easier. As a clinician, it's cleaner. It's not better. It's just cleaner, you know. Okay. We are in this, this evolution. Okay. Um, in terms of expenses and the cost of the software and uh, uh, the equipment and the uh, 3D printing, in, um, the intraoral scan and stuff like that, and especially for the software, some, some of the software is very, very expensive. And for many people, they cannot afford to invest in, in, in such expenses. Uh, I know that there are some open, um, open resources, but it's still, uh, um, you know, it has an issue of the accuracy, um because we are using for the medical purposes so um in some you know um developing countries is very difficult to apply the digital workflow so what's your advice for them you know in case of highly complex cases the, you can work as we work it for decades, you can you don't have to work properly like digitally. The point is like you can learn to use the the free softwares, the open source softwares. You can work in it works good, but for some dentists, they don't have the time to learn how to do it. And of course, if you pay a software, uh, it makes your life easier. It's not like a little easier, it's made a lot easier because you can use the software and the software is made for it. But it's not like, oh, I. it's impossible to work without digital. It's not, you don't have to thinking like that. The point for me is like, you should use the digital to learn more. It's not like, oh, uh, we forget how to take impressions or I don't have to walk in we using walks yeah. anymore. The point is like, you should understand your patient and understand the cases and doesn't, you don't have to thinking like of my, of course, it's my point of view. Oh, I don't, I cannot work with big cases because I don't have a uh, scanning. It's, it's a, a small detail. You should think in more like, uh, analogic kind of uh, working flow 
and the digital will step by step go inside like oh i will do zirconia crowns yes it's a digital part of the treatment but you can do zirconia with uh, gypsum models you know yeah uh, stone models you don't have to thinking like it's impossible for you it, it's a step by step we all we started with uh, analogic like everybody this maybe this uh, now the dentists that are information now uh, could start with a digital like i in the end of the graduation they go like okay i'm digital but we all start with analogic yeah exactly it works <laughs> it exactly. works sometimes better sometimes better than digital yeah exactly uh vinicius you you mentioned very important point um during the treatment you you say that um you do the mock-up with the uh uh, providing the temporary prosthesis without uh, showing to the patients in the visual uh, stage. And that is very important, I guess, in my, in my opinion. Uh, when you mentioned in the beginning that build uh, confident, when you listen to the patients to the issue and the problems and be a good listener to the patients, try to solve the, the problem. So I touched from this point that uh, the patients can see the actual uh, mock-up or timber prosthesis in his mouth and he can feel it, he can see it by the mirror, he can even you send it uh, back home to see it with the family and stuff like that. So from your experience, uh, how that can build a strong um, confidence to the patient to go forward for the treatment that you proposed? Well, the point for me is like, I'm not an expert in Photoshop or this kind of things. I'm, I'm not. I have a friend that uh, Enrique Quevedo is an amazing dentist that he works with these digital uh, uh, solutions and he works a lot of Photoshop and this kind of thing so he can make the the picture of the patient and then he he draw the smile and make the, everything and I I cannot work like that I'm I'm not good <laughs> I just not good the the point is like the patient can feel it uh, usually we we I can say I work with uh, elderly patient so is is around forty years. Uh, 50 years is is not like uh, 20 years veneers uh, molar to molar it's, this is not my patient you know my patient uh, are older than that so uh, they they raised uh, they raised it by they grow with uh, analogic uh, kind of things so uh, they take pictures but it's not like uh, the digital, um, how can I say, the youngers, you know, that a lot of pictures, this kind of things. So when they can see it in the mirror, they can take pictures and post in, in Instagram or showing to her relatives. Uh, this, now, these situations don't, uh, I cannot compare with like all digital because when I do like the, the drawing and this kind of things in Photoshop, uh, first it's not real and the patient cannot feel it like real. It's more like, oh, okay, in the computer it works, but in my mouth, how can I, how can I say it works in my mouth? So when I do the, the mock-up and I can show him and always it's not like just the mock-up. I do the mock-up and I do uh, polish things. I make it bright and everything and show him not in the small, uh, is the small mirror. I make the patient uh, stand up and go to like the bathroom or the, the big mirror in my, in my, my clinic. And he goes there and look 
And oh, okay, you it's can nice. See the smile. Yeah. <laughs> That's the point, the difference between like the picture. Oh, here in the screen, you can see like blah, blah, blah. No, it's like he can feel like this is me now. I can be like this. So for me, in this time, uh, I prefer to do a, a, a mock up. Yeah. But of course, with the younger, maybe it, it can change, you know, just yeah. for me, it, it doesn't work now. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Um, so I think uh, our attendees are a little bit shy to ask questions. So I think we are going to conclude uh, our session for the uh, webinar today. But uh, before to do that, it's uh, our tradition in Digital Dontics to present a certificate of uh, appreciation. So we hereby express our sincere appreciation to the Dr. Finesius Rizzo in recognition of his contribution as a live webinar speaker for the Digital Dontics webinar series on the topic of intellectual planning for complex or rehabilitation cases that was presented on Tuesday, November 1st, 2022. So, Vinicius, I'm so, so glad to having you with us today. Uh, you reached our um, knowledge with those kind of important informations for, uh, uh, for our um, attendees and the, for the future uh, dentists who are looking to start a new, uh, uh, a new career as a dentist to uh, rehabilitate patients. So thank you. Thank you so much, Vinicius. Thank you very much, Mahmoud. Thank you very much for the, the possibility of being here with you. And well, uh, be safe and see you next time. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye-bye.